my soccer universe. Well, this is not the typically uh, measured round out for a Serie A round, but this is literally half an hour after the game ended. Um, main reason uh, is that tomorrow is Christmas Eve, where we in Austria celebrate actually in the evening, so it uh, will be kind of a busy day. So, feeding two videos in there would not feel quite right. So, yeah, here it is. I just watched Milan win, which is my first headline is that, yeah, we have Milan staying on top, staying undefeated. Second headline is Inter is joining them and we have at the moment a Milanese duel for the title. However, I think the biggest headline, absolute the biggest head, the headline is the absolute um, SHIT day that Juve had yesterday um, with losing three <laughs> goals and then uh, conceding three goals in a day. So yeah, uh, I think as a, if you're a Juve fan, you definitely had better days than these. I also have to say, overall picture, a very weird round, a lot of odd results in there um, that actually allowed the Milanese Giants to really take a leap away from the pack. But also, as we will see, uh, there is a lot of stuff happening uh, down below where there were really crazy results that... Um, we have a new last place team who actually got a good result. So that's also highly unusual. But the big story first, um, I was thinking, shall, shall I make a video about it? But since it's also condensed, let's pack it in that one. Uh, Napoli's appeal ahead uh, in front of the Olympic uh, Committee for the um, Juventus game where they were docked a point and uh, Juve handed a 3-0 um, win that was the appeal was upheld by the Olympic Committee and so that result is nullified and we go back in the table now uh, the game has to be replayed I don't as know as of now when the date should be I expect it somewhere mid January January 13 seems like a good uh, um, date because there's another makeup game so that is right now in there but with that the implications of in the in, in the table are kind of obvious Napoli suddenly finds themselves in third spot you uh, uh, level on points with Juve and Roma however uh, due to goal difference there's still goal difference at this moment uh, Napoli is in third spot so uh, at that point you would think we have a four five-way title race potentially so yeah uh, it made for an interesting round and the round started already with a bank with last place Crotone winning against Parma did not come totally unexpected but what really came unexpected is what you were produced against Fiorentina I saw the second half and I saw the main uh, points of the first half which is a wonderful pass on Frank Ribery and you have to say I've watched uh, Atletico uh, Madrid Real Sociedad and then as when, when that was over I said okay let's f switch over and see how Juve Fiorentina is, is going and on the zone they have those spoiler alerts uh, and I saw two in the first half and said yeah that's a 2-0 Juve and then I looked closer goal what? Ribery is playing a wonderful pass into Dusan Vlahovic who surrounds the keeper third minute 1-0 that game is interesting, it's at least 1-1, one, one. then I go a little bit further. Red card, hmm, I hope not for Fiorentina, and I see Juan Cuadrado really going with a ruthless tackle. Uh, he stood up um, and getting a red card. Uh, I cannot say much more for the first half, I know that in the second half, Borja Valero quickly uh, got a yellow card and then was duly substituted a few minutes later because he was teetering on, on, on the edge of a red and uh, Prandelli clearly said, yeah, I'd rather finish the game with 11 men. Uh, there was then a call for a penalty of Juventus. You know, there were a few, and, and a goal disallowed by Cristiano Ronaldo, a header. He was clear, clear said, but seemingly, uh, and I also said the penalty, penalty appeal, he has a ghost down too easily. I mean, the, the, yeah, there is a hand on the shoulder, but as soon as he feels the hand, he uh, suddenly gets, gets spasms and falls down. So yeah, uh, Nedvek couldn't take it and went out. Uh, and I have to say that um, 
Fiorentina played it nice in in a way, and then um, you know Bonucci on all th three goals not lo looking good. First he forces kind of Alexandro into an own goal, and then the goal by Martin Cáceres he can also be better. But that that that, that goal was nice played, and Fiorentina three 0 win. I think they once won four 0 at Turin. They said, but other than that is a really really huge win for Fiorentina. And given the rivalry between those two teams, although I think it's very one sided. Uh, that was a, a big day for Florentine fans and if it wasn't for Milan's uh, way that they won that game I probably would have worn a Fiorentina shirt today um, but yeah it ends it was was fitting with Juve's disaster day yesterday um, I watched today Verona against Inter and I hope that Inter is dropping points because, because I knew if Inter drops points then Milan only needs a draw and I was really thinking that Milan Lazio will end in, in, a, in a draw uh, something like that, uh, if not, no loss. So I was really hoping that Verona can do something to uh, Inter. And to be honest, Verona has been taking off points over every big opponent that they faced so far. I think Juve, Milan, they got the awarded win over uh, Roma. So Lazio, I think, even. So I was really hopeful, but yeah, first half, not much to talk home, home about. I think both teams were kind of feeling each other. Um, then in the 51st, Ashraf Hakimi makes a really nice cross in that Lautaro Martinez takes out of the air. Really nice via the post goal going in. I thought, yeah, that's exactly how I expected the game to go. Into so and so, then like against Napoli, they get the goal and that's done. Uh, to my enjoyment, 12 minutes later, um, Handanovic, it was an easy, easy cross, but he lets it fall. I think it went on through the legs of Skriniar, then even Illich. The ball is between the legs of Skriniar, he just pokes it in, into the net. I was laughing out loud. This was really what I wanted to see. I didn't want to see Skriniar making up for it and heading home in the 69th, the winner. And at that point, then Inter looked the stronger team, physically more present, and they got a uh, 2-1 win. Almost a three ball win, but uh, Lukaku, who was not have, having having good good game first, he was marked a little bit out of the game or isolated out of, out of the game, and then um, on the goal that he scored, you know, some bad decisions uh, in between, and then on the goal there that he scored, he makes a clear foul, so it ends two one for Inter. Let's go to Milan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was after twenty minutes. I thought we are cruising. It will be an un, uh, unexciting game. Exactly how I wanted, the, like the Sassuolo game. Milan really started well, pressing Lazio high. Lazio really having. As soon as they tried to play out from her back, there were many Milan players there with kind of man-to-man -man pressing, really making it hard for Lazio to get out and running uh, out of their own uh, area. And uh, there were a few chances before, but uh, Czalonogli assists Rebic, who can slow, slow at home nicely in the 10th minute. Um, and I said, yeah, that's going well. Uh, a little bit later, it was actually a slapstick scene where Rebic should have pulled it away much sooner, but he's then, uh, you know, the interplay between Rebic and Leao was so, 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 and so, if they're a little bit more concentrated, and this was a big theme for Milan in that game. Uh, they could have made the goal before, but then uh, Rebic is brought down in, in, in the box with a rather rough tackle. Um, Chalanoglus, I was not celebrating the penalty because I know Milan has a spotty record with those, but Chalanoglus is up in 2 0, 70 minutes, all that I wanted at that point. Totally deserved. Lazio not in the game. And they get a lifeline uh, when Kalulu touches Correa in the box, but it was a Barely touching. I don't think this should be given as a foul. And Kalul up until that point had a great game. He was really had had a quite the dominant performance. But yeah, um, Correa is brought down. Immobile against Donnarumma. Immobile steps up, takes a shot. Donnarumma makes a great save. I mean, that shot was hard. Donnarumma is down, puts it on the post, uh, puts the ball high onto the post. It goes out. I mean, if it would have gone out, it would have been perfect. But it comes off the post and Luis Alberto can head it in and he could not believe it. I mean, yeah, he was celebrating like five minutes later still that goal. Um, Lazio also playing in those uh, green jerseys. And that changed the game. I did not expect it. And it changed the game because Lazio moved higher. Milan actually did not do the high press any anymore. You could see that they, 
the, the, the team was really, 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 really tired. Uh, and Krunic and Tonali in midfield were completely overrun. I mean, it was uh, Lazio could walk through midfield and then they were clashing against the back four of, of Milan, who played overall well, although not very um, on the securest part. I mean, Ro Romagnoli, I think, pulled in a great game. Kalulu was then shaky. I mean, he really started out well. Uh, especially with also extra forward, but then uh, it got shaky and I have to say it was lucky that Milan got with a 2-1 into the half because uh, after that goal it was all Lazio. Lazio though, you know, they kept the shots at the minimum and the other thing is there were many corners and you know I'm really, I'm literally doing this from memory now, there were many corners coming into the box where Donnarumma is kind of um, blocked the goalkeeper area, uh, which made him look very unsafe, but he, he actually wasn't because there was so much going on in front of in front of him. Second half was not, I mean, it was a great first half. It was up and down, there were clear two fa phases. Uh, it was an intense game. Second half remained, uh, the intensity remained high. However, um, it also has to be said that the game was not as fluid anymore. It was a lot of, uh, you know, um, uh, challenges and then the, you have to get the rebound from the challenge and that was the kind of the fight in the whole game and yeah um, I thought that after a phase where you know the first was a little bit Milan then it was a little, little bit Lazio but then there were kind of five to ten minutes where Milan the Lazio defense was separated from the midfield and Milan could really attack into that and with a little bit more concentration uh, they should have scored at least one goal right, right there. I mean, they had one, 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 one four on two, where Salamakers and uh, Chalanoglu didn't do it. And Salamakers, he was great in getting balls, uh, but almost every pass he paid, played was gone away. And the other thing I didn't like is that Leo, who should have been the center, he was always drifting wide. And, and uh, at, at one point, the commentator even said, the coach is telling Leo to stay in between the two central defenders. And just in this kind of pressure period of Milan, a wonderful attack by um, Lazio. I think uh, who, who it was, was uh, Cataldi came on, who played it then to Milinkovic Savic with one touch, a wonderful pass uh, into Giro Immobile, uh, who could escape Kalulu, and then just with the simplest of touches gets in net 2 2. I was really really mad at that point and then because I saw this is a game that is going away from Milan uh, and yeah I think right up until the 80th I always had the feeling that Milan is more on the back foot than Lazio has quite some control over the game it was really intense and really really exciting um, However, I, I think in the 74th when Giri Mobilik and, Ser and Milinkovic Savic, Milinkovic Savic had kind of a sloppy game, but you know, when those two came off, I kind of breathed a little sigh of relief. And in the end, uh, that proved to be the difference. I mean, it was still very tight. It was only in the last five minutes and into stoppage time that Milan suddenly got chances, namely twice Rebic and Jalanoglu. I think had a, had a shot, Tonali a shot, and then from a corner kick, Teo Hernandez heads it in 3-2. I this was this felt to me like they had just won the champion. This was just the final right there. Getting the first place into the Christmas break. Yeah. This really, 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 really felt great. And the way the other results, <laughs> and, and I didn't see anything of this, so I just give the, the, the results a little bit, uh, the game line. Roma against Cali was 3-2, much tighter than uh, it actually was. I mean, it was one point, it was 1-1, one, one, but then the 71st, Jaco and then Mancini in the 77th, make it 3-1 Roma, only later um, Pedro, Joao Pedro penalty, uh, makes the score line a little bit tighter for Cagliari. Uh, Atalanta had a two-goal lead with a... Within a minute, Luis Muriel converts a penalty, scores another goal. 2 0 lead for Atalanta, but late Bologna to Tomiyasu and uh, Nehuen Paz can equalize, taking points of Atalanta. That came a little bit unsur so surprising. Torino gets a point at Napoli. Yes, Napoli was in Retiro and so on, but now nah, Napoli, the equalizer through Insigne came in the 92nd minute. Napoli, after being really great, having them two losses in, in a row, and I don't count the Lazio loss one because they were missing Insigne, Mertens, and you know, wh wh whoever played, but still, Torino, you gotta beat 
honestly, but maybe a good showing by Torino. Then Sampdoria, and you should watch Sampdoria, they are they're having on average the most goals in any game. Is, uh, well, maybe, may, maybe not, may, mid to, to, to Torino's there. Uh, losing, uh, being, you know, getting the equalizer in the 55th, but immediately from uh, Chicho Caputo gives the 2-1 for Sassuolo, then Berardi in the 58th makes it 3-1, and only Keita Balde can uh, get one late in, he also gets sent off in stoppage time. And uh, then we had Genoa winning at Spezia, big win for Genoa, and Benevento winning at Udine. Udine actually uh, has, hasn't played at home against all promoted teams and not performing well against either of them. And with all these uh, nice results now, we have the following table, Milan still on top, still on top, still on top by a single point, but against the big teams they get it. Champions, uh, chances for championship 30, not as high. Inter's 44 are the highest that we've seen this season so far, so just as an info there. Um, with Juve Napoli still uh, and Atalanta also having game less, it's rather uneven, so I would say let's adjust the table as well and, and we see that Napoli is actually in third uh, spot although not having a great season so far but there is already a quite a distance between Milan, Inter and the rest of the pack chasing. Uh, Sassuolo and Juve are also in there uh, and on the bottom as I said Torino is last place and they got a point at uh, Napoli. It's really amazing. And then they have now a short Christmas break after the new year we have the next round and yeah, we are kind of spared the big uh, games. This will come to the ne next round. Uh, so Inter Cotone, Roma Sampdoria is something. Atalanta Sassuolo, I think, is probably the most interesting one. I also think Benevento Milan is an interesting one for sure. So yeah, Buon Natale to everyone out there. Or buen, buene feste, I think they said. It was a crazy round, uh, very emotional still. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, fill me in below as I saw only three games that I can report on here, so I'm missing probably a lot of things. And yeah, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, wish you a wonderful day. Bye.